Hello and welcome to The Old Flyers. Becoming sidetracked when researching stories of planes and pilots happens a lot to me. So it was when I researched the story of Jimmy Melrose, a young Australian pilot who broke a record for flight between the UK and Australia in 1934. He had received help from his uncle Noel Pemberton Billing. This chap just happened to be the founder of Pemberton Billing Limited, manufacturer of steam yachts and flying boats that he set up in 1913. This was just 10 years since the Wright brothers first powered control flights. Pemberton Billing Limited designed and built a range of flying boats. Their first aircraft, the PV-1, built in 1914, only flew for a few metres. Wasn't a success. The next aircraft was the PV-9, notable for being built in seven days. The PV-23, PV-25 and PV-29 followed. In 1916, losing interest in aviation, Noel Pemberton Billing sold his company to his works manager, Hubert Scott Payne. Hubert renamed the firm Supermarine Aviation Limited. You may have heard of that name. Over a period of 40 years, this firm designed 21 flying boats, amphibians and aircraft, ranging from the AD flying boat in 1916 to the Supermarine Scimitar in 1956. The Supermarine Spitfire from 1936 is arguably their most famous design. Their seaplanes made them eligible to enter the Snyder Trophy competition awarded to the fastest seaplane over a fixed course. Aircraft they entered included in 1919 the Supermarine Sea Lion 1 powered by a 450 horsepower Napier Lion engine. In 1922, the Sea Lion 2. In 1923, the Sea Lion 3. In 1925, the Supermarine S4. 1927, 29, 31, the Supermarine S5 and S6. Those 1922, 27, 29 and 31 entries won. The race was significant in advancing aeroplane design particularly in the fields of aerodynamics and engine design, later so obvious in the best fighters of World War II. On the racing circuit, one event, more than any other, came to symbolise the quest for speed. It started at Monaco in 1913. Jacques Schneider, the French Under Secretary for Air, wanted to promote the design of seaplanes he donated a magnificent trophy for which international teams would compete. After the war, the Schneider Cup became the most coveted prize in aviation. Italy won it in 1920, 21, and Britain in 1922. Then the Americans sent a team of Navy pilots who swept the board, the winner reaching 181 miles an hour. The secret lay in their new Curtis D-12 engines, which could be cooled by water even at very high power. In 1925, an American army pilot, James Doolittle, won the trophy. Then the United States government withdrew financial support, leaving the Schneider Cup to the Europeans. The British came up with a new contender, the Supermarine S-5 a new monoplane racer designed by R.J. Mitchell. The wings were thinner and therefore had to be braced. And it was braced all over, almost like a birdcage. We apprentices, we reckon we knew more than our bosses, looked at that and said, what are on all those wires on it? We thought that was all wrong. And then I went to see it on the slipway. And I was highly impressed. Here was this beautiful aeroplane, streamlined, um, slim, to me, the perfect aeroplane that existed. Once again, it was engine power which counted. Especially on the turns, when it came down off the glide with a full power, it really was something that made him blood tingle. So it was very, very thrilling and exciting. You would see this little dot buzzing along. And the noise of the engine, which was a great roar, came very much reflected off the water, of course, across the Solent. 
and you could see the airplane it was at least half a mile ahead of the sound. The 1927 race was held in Venice between the Italians and the British. Both teams had new aircraft. The Italian M52s gradually dropped out with engine problems, leaving two S5s to romp home. Flight Lieutenant Webster won at 281 miles an hour. Once again, the search for more speed lay in more power. Rolls-Royce took up the challenge. Their R series of engines had many of the features of America's D12, but they now produce nearly 2,000 horsepower. These engines were really just made for the racing to start with. They found the engine worked fine for 20 minutes or half an hour. But of course that wasn't good enough. We wanted a bit more than that. And eventually they managed to produce at least an hour and a half absolute reliability. The new S6 racers with the R engines were only just ready in 1929. If Britain could win two more races, it could keep the Schneider Cup forever. A national will develop to do so. People came from all over the place. There were huge crowds on, the, on the, all the beaches. And it was a very exciting business. The amount of technology that went into those aeroplanes was tremendous. I mean, they really were touching on the sort of limits of aviation possibility. Britain won the 1929 race. And in 1931, John Boothman ended the saga of the Schneider Cup by winning it outright. <laughs> then George Stainforth broke the world speed record at 407 miles an hour. The streamlined shape and the low drag liquid cooled engine pioneered by Schneider Trophy designs are obvious in the British Supermarine Spitfire, the American North American P-51 Mustang and the Italian Mackie C202 Folgiori. It was Hubert Scott Payne who oversaw this advance in aircraft design by melding record-breaking powerboat racing design. Hubert Payne was born in either Shoreham by Sea or Christchurch, England in 1891, accounts differ. He showed an early interest in engineering and design working on aircraft design during World War I. His formal education in engineering is not documented. It was not uncommon then for individuals to gain expertise through hands-on learning and practical experience rather than through formal academic programs. His early work in aviation laid the foundation for his later ventures into marine technology. What works in air works in water as both act as fluids. Hubert had joined Pemberton Billing Limited as their works manager. At the time, the company was building flying boats for the British Admiralty. He had the good fortune to employ Reginald Mitchell as a design engineer. In February 1919, Scott Payne started the first cross-channel flying boat service called the British Marine Air Navigation Company Limited. They flew between Wollstone and the Channel Islands and Le Havre, using converted Supermarine AD flying boats. In 1923, Scott Payne sold Supermarine for £192,000, about £3.5 million today. In 1924, Imperial Airways was formed by the merger of Scott Payne's British Marine Air Navigation Company Limited and three other airlines. He was the director of Imperial Airways until 1939. After a complicated array of small British airlines, the British government was forced to bring order to the chaos, so in 1924 amalgamated many of them into one company, Imperial Airways. By 1926, there were whole fleets of new airliners to be unveiled. And new flying boats were commissioned. The well-financed Scott Payne now designed and raced Power boats. In 1927, he bought the Hive Shipyard, renaming it the British Power Boat Company. It was enlarged into one of the country's most modern mass production boat building yards. Many sophisticated award winning racing boats were produced, an example being Miss England, which is now on display at the Science Museum in London. In the 1930s, the British Power Boat Company supplied seaplane tenders and armoured target boats to the Air Ministry and tenders 
for Imperial Airways flying boats. T.E. Shaw, Lawrence of Arabia, assisted in the testing of these boats. Although the factory was destroyed by fire in 1931, it was rapidly rebuilt. During 1932 and 33, Scott Payne and Fred Cooper designed and built the single-engine Miss Britain III as a Harmsworth Trophy Challenger. In a 1933 race, Scott Payne was narrowly defeated by the four-engine Miss America. In 1934, Miss Britain III set the world record for a single-engine boat of 110 miles per hour. Miss Britain III is now on display at the National Maritime Museum at Greenwich. From 1933, Scott Payne designed and built hard chine motor torpedo boats and motor anti-submarine boats. In 1939, agreement was reached with the American Electric Launch Company to purchase a British powerboat 70-footer, later named PT-9, as a template for American production under license. On 3rd of October, Scott Payne met President Roosevelt and senior ELCO representatives at the White House to authorise the creation of a new naval arm, the Patrol Torpedo Boat Squadrons. Production started at a new ELCO factory at Bayonne, New Jersey in January 1940. The Canadian Power Boat Company was set up by Scott Payne in 1940, producing 39 boats, mainly motor torpedo boats. After the passing of Lend-Lease in 1941, comparative trials nicknamed the Plywood Derbies, were held between rival American boat builders. Elko won both trials. Elko went on to produce 754 PT boats, including Jack Kennedy's PT-109, as well as the boat that rescued General Douglas MacArthur from Corregidor. In December 1944, Scott Payne received a cheque for $200,000 with an accompanying letter of appreciation for his contributions made to the development of the PT boat. This released Elko from any liabilities concerning the license rights. In 1945, all contracts at both the Canadian and British powerboat companies were cancelled. After the war, Scott Payne continued to work in the marine industry. He founded the company Saunders Row in 1951 which went on to become a prominent manufacturer of hovercraft and other innovative marine vehicles. Hubert Scott Payne died in April 1954 at the young age of 63. Despite his relative brief life, his contributions to both aviation and marine technology left a lasting impact, and he is remembered as a pioneering figure in the development of high-speed boats and hydrofoil technology. In 1948, he was made an American citizen. Thank you for watching. Comments always welcome. Like and subscribe to promote new content.